Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I want to look at the BetterDocs plugin. BetterDocs is a plugin for creating a knowledge base on your WordPress website. BetterDocs is a new knowledge base plugin for WordPress. It gives you the ability to add a knowledge base or FAQ area. BetterDocs comes with a large number of features and allows you to create a help section similar to what you may have seen on sites using help desk software. There are services for hosting a knowledge base, but you can avoid the monthly subscriptions by hosting it yourself. We see this type of documentation library typically on sites of software and software service vendors. BetterDocs obviously makes sense for such use cases. However, it's so flexible and has so many customization options that it can also serve for creating other types of knowledge bases. For example, when I was managing an IT team, we were challenged to keep track of important server information, code snippets, network diagrams, and so on. One staff member kept an 80 plus page Word document and others saved information in spreadsheets. BetterDocs would have been a huge boon for our IT department and would have allowed us to save, organize, and search for important information. You can download the free version from the WordPress plugin directory. You'll definitely want to go to the product website because it has an extensive, well, knowledge base. Appropriately, this is a very well-documented plugin. The company behind the project, WP Developer, is using the plugin for its own projects. So this is a good place to come if you want to see a demo of the plugin. The premium version of the plugin is an add-on to the free version so if you go pro, then you'll have both installed. The premium version adds several features to the free version. These include a drag and drop article and category organizer, an instant answer bot, and analytics. I'll point these out as we do the walkthrough. When you install the free version and activate it, you're greeted by a wizard that walks you through the process of setting up your knowledge base. On the first page of the wizard, you have the option to share diagnostic data. On the second page, it lets you select the slug for your knowledge base. You have the option to enable Instant Answer. Instant Answer is a chat bubble bot where visitors can search for help docs on any page. And you also have the option to have the plugin automatically generate the starting documentation page. If you don't use the built-in docs page, then you'll need to use a short code for the starting page. The third page of the wizard gives you links to create categories and articles. The fourth page gives you a link to the customizer for styling or to the settings page. There's no reason to go to the customizer if you haven't already created some articles. The last page gives you a finish button and an option to go to your docs starting page. If you haven't created any docs yet, there isn't gonna be anything here. However, if you install the premium version first, you don't go to the wizard, but that's not a big deal because the wizard is basically just walking you through these settings tabs. You're going to want to visit the settings anyway because the wizard doesn't touch on all of the options that you might want to enable or disable. These are the same options that we had in the wizard to use the built-in documentation page to change the slug for the knowledge base and here you can also do it for the categories and tags. And then there's the option of who you want to collect analytics from, everyone guests only or registered users only. And I guess you, you would use registered users if this was an internal site or a membership site. Finally, there's the option to exclude bot analytics, which I assume are visits from search engine bots. The Layout Settings tab has a large number of settings, and I think you'll probably want to leave most of them as they are. However, I disable the option for comments on the single document page and disabled the credit, i.e. the notice that this was created using BetterDocs in the documentation page also. The design tab just takes you into the customizer. And again, it makes most sense to go here after you've created some documents. Then there are short codes that you can use if you want to manually create your document pages or if you want to integrate part of the knowledge base into some section of your site. And then the Instant Answer tab is where you select your settings for the Instant Answer bot. 
You have some options here to use these magic tags for customizing the bot. Some default messages. You can change the icons if you like and change some of the labels. Change the position, disable the branding, and this is a code snippet that you can use if you would like to put the bot on another domain or a subdomain and have it use the knowledge base on the site that you installed the BetterDocs plugin. When you go to create a new knowledge base article, you go into the regular WordPress editor. In this case, I've got Gutenberg installed, but I imagine if you had the classic editor as a default, you would fall into that. Note that I have Elementor installed for this content type, and I could use Elementor also to create knowledge base articles. If you were using Beaver Builder or some other page builder, I imagine you could use that as well. With Elementor or your page builder and Gutenberg, you have a large number of widgets and blocks that you can use to add almost any type of content, videos, images, and anything you can do with Elementor or Gutenberg. Here I'm adding a document for the benefits of our group, and one of the benefits is that there's a monthly potluck dinner. I'm just using some dummy text here. And you note that here are the categories that I've already created for this knowledge base. And the secret of having a good knowledge base, as we'll see when we look at it, is to organize your categories well and put your articles into the categories. Now, just for this demo, I'm going to forget to add this article and go ahead and publish it. Now, when we look at the all articles list, we see the articles according to the category they've been added to. This is a nice GUI that comes with the plugin. And here, for example, you can see an uncategorized, which we don't want, is the article I just created. We want this to go into the member benefits area. Now, if I refresh that, you'll see that the unassigned category is gone. You can also reorder the articles just as easy as that. Better Docs, when you install it, creates a categories and tags just for your knowledge base. These are different than the categories and tags that are available by default with posts, so they're kept separate. Here's the categories page, and you see all the categories listed here. You're able to move the categories around if you like. Just like that. And let's look at one. And there's also an option here to set a default icon or image for categories. And when you go into a category, you have the option to set the order or to set an image for that particular category itself. So now that I've created a bunch of articles, let's go check out what we get in the customizer. We get a new high-level customizer item here. And when we click it, we get five additional customizer areas. Now we're going to have to go into our knowledge base to see them. This first starting page is the docs page. And these are the settings here. One thing that comes with Better Docs is you have some templates that you can use to change the default layout. There are templates available in several areas. This is the first one for the Docs page, and I've selected this more verbose, detailed template, but there's also the option for a more compact version if you prefer. You can set the background colors. You can have a background image for this page background properties, padding, width, spacing between columns, column padding, icon sizes, font, color, size, the count to customize the count bubble and count information, customize the article list, the colors there and font sizes and the icon size and the explore more button to customize that. The next area of the customizer is for the single docs page. So we need to click through to a single doc to view it. And you can see that there are three templates for that at the moment. I've got this one selected. See the sidebar here? There is also this style and this style. 
So you can choose a style for this sidebar area. Again, we have a lot of customizer options here, content area padding, customizing the breadcrumbs here, the table of contents, the title, the content area itself, the size and font color, the social sharing button. So this is something that you can enable or disable here. You can customize the share buttons and the other values here. The sidebar. This is the sidebar and you can customize that. Again, icon size, font color, padding, background color, and so on. Then there's the archive page. That's this page here where you're looking at a particular category. That's called the archive. You can have a background color image. You can change the padding and margins, the border radius, the icon color, font size, and so on. And then the live search bar, which is this. You can customize that as well. You can have a background image for it. You can have a background color, the padding, the icon, the border radius, and then the results box when someone searched the box of results that shows here. So those are the customizer options. A quick look at the knowledge base outside of the customizer. This is the auto-generated document page. This is the archive page with the individual articles. And then here's an example of an individual article. On the home page, this is the instant answer bot. You can see that it's seeded with some articles or you can search for it and find the article. If your visitor doesn't find what they're looking for, there's an option for a form here that sends an email. And there's also the option for an emote mood feedback here. One of the nice things about this instant answer ask option is if you don't have a chatbot on your site, this is a way to provide help on any page without needing to always be connected to a computer or a phone checking if someone has messaged you. The last area to look at here are the analytics. And you can see this is pretty simple. It's basically just showing us the number of views on different days. There is the option here for feelings, but the instant answer bot is the only place where it's possible for someone to give that feedback. So this analytics area is pretty simple. See, there are only two options there. Instead of all docs, you do have the option to just add in pages here. But I think it would be nicer to have an option for a report that listed all of the knowledge base articles in order by number of views. In summary, I'm very happy with best docs. Although the analytics seem minimal and need to be made more robust to be useful, the analytics seems like the only area that's underdeveloped. I was surprised at the number of features and options that the plugin offers. The instant answer bot is very nice for sites that don't have a chat bot. If you already had a chat bot, having two bubbles there might be problematic. But another nice feature of the instant answer bot is that you can include it on another site if, for example, you had several related sites or a subdomain. The Better Docs templates are also a nice feature, as are the extensive styling options in the customizer. The drag and drop article and category organizer is also very cool. It makes managing and ordering the knowledge base articles much easier. If you want to add a knowledge base to your website, Better Docs has pretty much everything you need, plus some nice extra features. So that's my walkthrough and review. I hope you found it useful. If you have some questions or feedback, please leave them in the comment area below. Thank you for watching.